Hey guys, Shane here. So today we are gonna go over the top five college degrees that are actually worth it for you to spend years and years of your life and thousands and thousands of dollars so that one day you can actually get that piece of paper that will make your life worth living and won't be a giant waste of your time that you just hang up on your wall and then never look at again. Now, this is a very controversial topic, and if you ask your family, most of them are probably going to tell you that you have to go to college because back when they were young, that was the key to success, and they have your best interests in mind. And I mean, can you really blame them? College has been a part of the American dream for decades. But if you look on YouTube or honestly a lot of different places on the internet, most creators are gonna tell you that college is pretty much not worth it. Now we've all heard the stories about the successful college dropouts turned billionaires and how they would have been even more successful even faster if they never went to college. And while there may be some truth to this, I do think that this is a little bit misleading. Take Mark Zuckerberg for an example. So if Mark Zuckerberg never went to Harvard, he probably would have never been able to start Facebook. So Facebook started off as a site that only college students could join. You needed an email that ended in .edu that you could only get if you went to college. Plus, let's be realistic here. Not everyone can be a billionaire. And honestly, do you even want to be a billionaire? I mean, these guys work like 120 hours a week like work is all they think about. They're just totally focused on work. They're basically robots that just work all the time. A study by the Journal of Nature Human Behavior showed that basically your happiness doesn't really increase above, depending on what metrics you use, 75 to $95,000 a year. But the truth is, is that many majors today are just complete scams and you will probably never be able to get to that seventy-five dollars to $95,000 a year mark. And even if it's your passion in life, you would probably be better off just studying it on your own without ever going to college. And there are countless examples out there of people who end up going six figures into debt and they can't even find a job. And if you don't believe me, then go ahead and take a trip to your local Starbucks and just ask them what degree they have. And I'm not trying to shit on baristas, honestly. Like, I've actually talked with many of them, and they're smarter and more educated than I am by a long shot, but they still work as baristas and they make pretty much minimum wage. Because the truth is, only about 25 to 27% of college majors have a job that is actually related to the major that they spent years of their life in order to get. But if you are really smart, and you do your research, you can choose a major that is going to be something that is extremely in demand, and it's gonna set you up for your whole life. Even if later on you decide to pivot to something else, you will always know that you have a job that you can get in no time. And the majors that I'm gonna focus on now are ones that are great right now, and they're also going to be great for many, many years in the future. And if you're trying to figure out what to do with your life right now, like, I don't blame you. I was in your position at one point, and if you really pay attention and watch this video, you're gonna have a really good idea of what direction that you should go. And the reason that I'm making this video is because I honestly wish a few years back that I had someone just like me to tell me the truth. Just give it to me the way that it actually is, tell me the hard truth, and it would've saved me a lot of time. Now, number five on this list is going to be engineering, and this might come as a huge surprise to a lot of you because you probably thought that this was gonna be number one. So what exactly do engineers do? Well, if you look on Google, the official definition is someone who applies the principles of science and mathematics to develop economical solutions to technical problems. Okay, so that was a lot of words, so let me try to kind of simplify this for you. Engineers are basically the middlemen between science and the real world. They have to have a really good understanding of the science behind why things work, and then they basically apply that to the real world in a cost-effective and efficient way. Now, a few examples of uh, engineering degrees that make the most money are gonna be obviously petroleum engineering, and then any type of engineering degree that involves software, coding, or technology. 
Now, some of the cons of being an engineer, it's very, very difficult. Probably one of the hardest majors that you can do. It's heavily uh, science and math based. So you have to be very, very good at math and science. And then another thing, and this could be probably a good or a bad thing, is that it's always changing and you have to basically be able to keep up with the latest developments and technology. So the pros of being an engineer is that it's very difficult. And what does that mean? It means that not a lot of people can do it. And so there's a huge barrier to entry uh, for others who want to try to get into engineering. For this reason, engineering will never become fully saturated and you'll pretty much have a job for the rest of your life. Now, another pro is, of course, I already mentioned it, it pays very, very well. Not all of the engineering degrees pay six figures right off the bat, but pretty much all of them, you can easily work your way up to six figures. It'll just take a few years. Now, another pro is that there is a lot of room for growth and you can always evolve and expand in your career. If you want to take on more of a management position, you know, you want to be like a project manager, you can go in that direction. Or if you think there's like an evolving technology that you uh, have a lot of passion for, or you think there's a lot of opportunity there, you can specialize in that and go in that direction. So number four on the list is going to be human resource management. And this is another great career that anybody can get into because just about every company on the earth needs people that have these skills. So the definition of human resource management is pretty complicated, honestly, but it's basically just how a company manages the people who work inside of the company so that they can get the most out of them, you know, the most efficiency without, you know, getting sued or something like that. Hey, send me that link to the monkey sex video. I'm going to forward it like it's hot. Yes. And more and more companies are realizing that it's incredibly important to put their employees first, you know, treat their employees well, and that way the employees will, you know, make you more money, they'll be more efficient, they will, uh, you know, treat customers well, and it just turns out to be a really good long-term strategy. And it's important to uh, also note that you know, human resource managers are the ones who do the hiring and the firing, and they're also the ones that make sure that the company doesn't get sued or fined. If I had a gun with two bullets and I was in a room with Hitler, Bin Laden, and Toby, I would shoot Toby twice. The thing that makes HR so important is that basically all big businesses in any industry that you go into need HR personnel. And I actually know of several different professionals that ended up pivoting and going into HR because there was such a high demand for HR managers. No, God! So the cons of HR, well, first of all, you're gonna have a really heavy workload. You're kind of like the glue person uh, in a company and so there's just a ton of different stuff. There's always gonna be something that you need to do at any given time. And the second thing is you have to fire people, which sucks because you might have to fire people that you really like. And then of course the third thing is office politics. Um, there's gonna be a lot of office politics when you get into HR and you are going to have to be the mediator when people have issues with each other, you're gonna have to sit down with you know, both parties and kind of like talk it out. And uh, that can get probably like pretty annoying. So the pros of HR is that you get to interact with a lot of people. You know, you're gonna be hiring people, you're gonna be uh, doing performance reviews, you're gonna be attending a lot of meetings. So if you are an extroverted person, this is probably a very, very good career path for you to get into. The second pro for uh, HR is you're always gonna have something to do. So if you are the type of person who really likes your day to go by super fast, you just wanna show up to work, do a bunch of work, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's the end of the day and you get to go home, this is gonna be another career that's gonna be great for you. And then of course, the third thing is the very, very attractive salary. So number three on the list is going to be business majors, but this one does have a caveat to it you do have to specialize if you go into business. So you don't wanna just get like a general business major, you do need to specialize in something. And a really good example of one that you could specialize in would be a sales manager. And when it comes to business majors, it is very, very important that you do your research and you figure out which one you like and then also figure out 
which one pays really well so that you can choose which majors to specialize in. And the truth is, is there will always be demand for business majors because companies need people who are really talented and they understand how business works in order for their company to be successful. And this isn't gonna change anytime in the near future. So the trick uh, to getting a business degree is to niche down, specialize something, and then get so good at that thing that the company simply can't ignore you. Now, let's talk about some of the cons of getting a business degree. If you're not careful, you might end up in a corporate office job, which can get really, really boring. You know, you'll end up like at a cubicle. If you're lucky, maybe you have your own office, but you'll basically be just like sitting at a desk all day long, and that can get really boring over time. The second thing is a lot of companies have really rigid structures and they don't give you a lot of freedom. So if you're someone who's extremely creative, a uh, business major, you can still go into it, but you do have to really do your research and figure out which companies give their employees more creative freedom. Now, another thing about being a business major is this major is notorious when you get hired by companies for having extremely competitive and cutthroat environments. Everybody's gonna be going for the job promotion. Uh, a lot of people are gonna be, you know, wanna be leaders on certain projects. And a lot of people are gonna wanna, you know, take credit when one project goes well, or if it doesn't go well, they're gonna, you know, try to blame you. So one thing that will help you a lot if you go into, you know, business major is being competitive. So if you're competitive, this is a really good one to go into, which is one of the pros for being a business major. Now, another pro is the opportunity for advancement. If you really excel in an environment like this, you can work your way all the way up to be the CEO of a company. And CEOs can make millions, sometimes over $10 million a year, sometimes even more. So there is an extremely high ceiling for uh, this if you really, really excel at it. And one thing that I forgot to mention is a lot of the time if you go into a business career, you may need to get a master's degree in order to be competitive. So instead of just going to school for four years, you might have to go to school for you know six years or more. So number two on the list is to major in a health career. So one really unfortunate fact about life is that we are all going to get sick at some point and have health issues, and that is just never gonna change. But this means that there will always be demand for healthcare professionals. And one really good example of this would be health services management, where you're basically kind of just like a CEO or a high level executive of a hospital or a clinic, and you just make sure that things run, the hospital or clinic makes money, but you also make sure that everything happens in an ethical way that uh, you know is the best thing for the patients who come into that facility. Recent research by the American Association of Medical Colleges has shown that by 2030, there will be a shortage of over, probably over 100,000 doctors. And it's not much different for nurses and other healthcare professions. And on top of that, healthcare is becoming more and more complicated with different laws changing and new demands in the profession. And if you choose a career in healthcare, it's pretty safe to say that you will pretty much never go without a job and you'll be able to live very comfortably pretty much anywhere you want to in the United States. Now, a really good website that you can use to do research on different health careers, because some are better than others, is explorehealthcareers.com. This is actually the website that I used to choose my profession, which is I'm a pharmacist, and it'll give you a really good general overview of different careers that you can look into. So you could maybe make a list of 10 different health careers that you're very interested in, and then go ahead and just you know call people who actually work in those careers and then ask them about it. Now, some of the cons of you know pursuing a career in health is you are gonna get worked really, really hard because if somebody is sick, you know, you have to take care of them, even if you know, you don't want to, you don't want to work those extra hours. It's sort of an ethical dilemma. You have to take care of them. And if a bunch of other people call out sick, you still have to take care of them. You can't just shut your doors. And the second thing is you end up seeing people at their worst. So a lot of the time people come in and they're sick, 
you know, they've gone through a really crappy process of going through our medical system. And by the time they get to the pharmacy, for instance, they're in a very, very bad mood and they can go off on you. They can be extremely rude on you and it can be a really, really rough environment to be in. And then another thing is this ethical dilemma of, you know, business versus health. So this is a huge, huge issue in this day and age. You know, a business has to make money in order to continue to survive. But when it comes to, you know, health and that sort of thing, it can be a little bit of an ethical dilemma on how much money the business can make. And that for that reason, there's a lot of regulations and there's a lot of laws and red tape, some of it needed and then some of it probably not as necessary. Now, the pros of healthcare is that you will always have a job. I mean, you can pretty much go anywhere you want in the United States and within a short amount of time, you can find a job if you choose a healthcare degree. And another thing is you get to make a real impact. I mean, if you are good at your job, you are helping people at some of the lowest points of their life and you can truly go home at night and say that you made an incredible impact on people's lives which is very, very underrated. Now, number one on this list is going to be a computer science degree. And an example of a computer science degree would be a software developer. And right now we are entering the age of automation where more and more we are trying to automate things that we do in our day-to-day -day life in order to save time. And this is creating a huge demand for people who can create software that can complete time-consuming tasks more efficiently. They took our jobs. Oh, yeah, they took our jobs. They took our jobs. They took our jobs. And I strongly believe that in the next 50 years, probably the most valuable skill that you can have is either being able to automate something or streamlining a process and that is exactly what computer science teaches you. Software developers are making six figures right out of college easily. And if you're willing to move to a big city like San Francisco, Seattle, you can easily get up into the 200 to $300,000 a year range within a few years. And on top of the lucrative salary, companies will fight tooth and nail in order to get you to be one of their employees. And this means that you can pretty much live wherever you want. Just look at what Google offers their employees. I mean, the offices look like freaking playgrounds. You get amazing benefits. You get free food, free coffee, free entertainment. You can take a break in the middle of the day and do yoga or whatever you want. It is insane. And if you're willing to job hop, and that is basically where you move from job to job every few years, you can basically get companies to start a bidding war and they will all just fight over you. And you know, they'll be like, oh, I'm gonna pay you, you know, 180. No, I'm gonna pay you 190, 210. And that way you can increase your salary to the 200 to 300K a year range uh, a lot faster. Now, a few of the really hot subjects to learn about right now are gonna be machine learning, you know, artificial intelligence, you're gonna to wanna to get into maybe like virtual reality or augmented reality. And right now there are pretty much no cons to getting into this. This is the perfect time to get into this major. The only cons I can think of is, you know, you do have to spend a lot of time staring at a computer screen, which we already spend a lot of time doing that, right? And then the other thing is, is if you want to get paid extremely competitively, you will have to live in certain, you know, big tech cities like Seattle, Austin, San Francisco area, Silicon Valley, you probably will want to live in those areas. So this does round out the list, but I do want to mention that there are a few key things, no matter what area you go into, that you need to do your research on. You wanna look up the average salary because this is gonna tell you what companies are willing to pay for this specific skill set, the specialized knowledge, that you go to college in order to get. And the second thing you wanna look up is job satisfaction. So if you look up a career and it has really low job satisfaction, that might mean that even though there's a lot of demand for it, there might be regulations or something along those lines that are causing the job to be very, very stressful or unfulfilling for people who go into that career. And then the third thing you wanna look up is the job growth demand. 
So you're basically just going to look up, you know, how many openings there are going to be in the next 10 years versus how many people are there are to fill those openings. It's pretty obvious. And obviously, if there's going to be a lot more openings than people to fill those openings, there are going to be incredible opportunities for you and there won't be much competition. And then, of course, the fourth thing to look at is are you interested? So you want to pick something that you're interested in, pick something that you're passionate about. You don't want to just pick, you know, pick something that makes the most money. That is not going to lead to a fulfilling life. And you'll actually probably end up making more money if you pick something that you do like and do have a passion for because you're going to get a lot better at it. And so a good idea would be to make like a list of 10 different careers. This is what I did that fit these four criteria. And then what you want to do after you make that list is you want to contact and reach out to people who actually work in those careers. You can do something as simple as just calling them on the phone, you know, going up to the business and speaking with them. And then you can also ask them to shadow, which is where you basically go and just kind of hang out with them for the day just to see what they do on a day to day basis. And then based off of that, you'll see what the job is really like. And if that's something that you want to do, you know, for 10 years or longer uh, in your future. OK, so I really hope that you enjoyed this video. You know, I work really hard on these videos. They take a long time to make. And if you made it this far in the video, please like, subscribe, you know, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. And then also comment down below. Let me know what you think. Tell me if there's some degrees that I missed out on. Tell me if I should have put number five as number one or, or whatever you believe to be true. And if you're a Starbucks barista and you're super mad at me for making this video, comment that down below too. And until next time, bye for now.